Okay. Good morning, children. Uh, we are going to do chapter six, biology, respiration implants. This now I'm starting it off. Which we are continuing. Uh, last time I had done till I think I had done it in WhatsApp. I've done aerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration, respiration combustion. And then I posted a link video on respiration through leaves. Okay, so basically, respiration in leaves takes through stomata. It's found on the lower surface of the leaf. Okay, uh, they are minipores, which are which have got guard cells, which when it becomes turgid or when it becomes tight, it opens up. It's bean shaped, so the exchange of gases takes place. <coughs> That's during the daytime. And in the evening, when the guard cells loses their turgidity or <coughs> becomes flaccid or soft, so it collapses and the stomata closes. Okay, so we did till there. Now uh, I I look for links in YouTube to talk about respiration not only through leaves. There is according to your book, there's respiration through stems and respirations through roots. But when I went online, I see I saw that. There was a term called cuticular respiration also, and the explanation was in much more detail, which is not applicable to you right now because you will not be understanding. So, uh, keeping that in mind, I thought I will do this on video only. So, we are going to talk about respiration through stems. Okay. Now, if you go to page number seventy-two on page number uh, figure six point three, page number seventy-two, you can see your apples. They are lenticels on apples, small, small. Openings, or if you see stems on page number seventy-three, figure six point four, they will be like marks all around the stems. Okay, the pock marks. Like if this is a stem, they might be just small, small. Okay, these are called lenticels, right? Okay, <clears throat> so these are tiny openings, and these enable the oxygen to reach the intercellular spaces of interior tissues. That means through them. Air can, oxygen can enter, okay, reaches the intercellular spaces, that means the space between the cells. In fact, oxygen is used by the cells only for the daily um, um, energy requirement, daily uh, nutrient requirement, whatever. It takes place there. I, we have talked about it, photosynthesis, respiration. We have already, I have already explained all these things earlier, okay. So, in spaces of interior tissues and carbon dioxide to release into the atmosphere. Similarly, CO2 is again from one of the anticells only. Carbon dioxide is also released into the atmosphere. Okay. So, they may, these lenticels may look like scars on the bark of a tree. Lenticels are also present on many fruits, quite noticeable on apples and pears. Dotted. Okay, it's not so smooth. Okay. They are visibly slightly more raised than the general surface of the stems. At the base of the lenticels are loosely arranged cells that allow the diffuse gases to pass through them. Okay, so if this if this is a stem, and I'm trying to make the stem at a microcellular uh, level. Okay, so this is what they're trying to tell. Okay, so if this is the stem, uh, the roof, uh, the bark of not the roof, the bark of the stem. Okay. If the rest of the cells are arranged tightly near the lenticels, there will be opening, right? And the cells around it will be loosely arranged so that exchange of gases can come. O2 can come in, CO2 can go out, right? That's the way it is. Okay. <clears throat> now, respiration also takes place through roots. Not the normal common roots that you see in and around, not in your garden and all. Okay, um, there are many types of roots, but uh, one of the most uh, commonly ro uh, studied roots through which respiration takes place is uh, if you go to uh, the mangroves, Sundarban areas, India, the mangrove areas are found in Sundarbans. Okay, it's in Bengal only, it was Bengal only. And Sundarbans is famous for. Um, one, it's usually famous for one thing, um, there's another thing also. The most famous thing found in the Sundarbans in India is uh, the Royal Bengal Tiger. It is one of the largest tigers in the world. It is, I think, longest in fact. Okay, it's a huge, beautiful tiger. It is found in the Sundarban areas. Okay, 
and though it's a threat and it's a problem for the local fishermen out there and more than that uh, Sundarban area people harvest a lot of honey understood there's a lot of honey in that area people go there to harvest honey and while they go to harvest honey it becomes dangerous for them because most of them get attacked by tigers in fact some of the tigers out there they're used to eating human flesh so that's a major problem out there but still uh, these are things of nature okay now if you go to Sundarbans there's these trees called mangrove trees and if you go to this area you'll see a lot of stem sort of a thing coming out of the soil the wet soil okay and in the Sundarban areas there's always a tide the high tide and low tide understood high tide is when the oceans water rises and it comes all the way and the whole area looks flooded right and low tide is when it recedes when it recedes the water goes towards the ocean and it becomes muddy then uh, crab and uh, mud skipper the famous fish which can it's a fish actually but it can live out of the waters and it's a very aggressive fish keeps fighting you know mud skippers okay they're known as mud skippers very weird fish it's found in the Sundarbans okay so you can see these things you, you if you don't understand what it is you think these are stems that are poking out of the soil right so the soil is there right so and let's say the mangrove trees are here so out here you'll see like this kind of structures okay so you might think that it's broken stems or you might think it's stems and all but that's not true actually these are nothing but roots only okay but they come out of the soil and they have got holes in them okay and through these holes respiration is taking place these roots they are specialized roots and they are called pneumatophores p n e u mato force okay new matter force so these are specialized roots which helps you in respiration uh, transpiration and they can uh, oxygen can enter the roots carbon dioxide can leave the roots basically exchange of gases takes place in this roots okay because of the though it takes place it takes place in the plants also but in the roots also it helps okay so these a specialized roots called pneumatophores uh, and they help in transpiration they help in respiration of the plants okay now respiration and photosynthesis what is this relationship uh, let me go through the book in animals there is only one kind of exchange of gases oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out but it is not so in plants what do you mean by that the exchange of gases and carbon dioxide in plants takes place by two processes okay photosynthesis and respiration i've already told you photosynthesis and respiration they're very closely connected in fact they're one waste product of one I will not by waste but i won't call it a waste product the byproduct of one becomes a fuel for the other one it's like interconnected understood it's like a cycle within itself right so both photosynthesis and cellular respiration are biochemical processes these are chemical processes that are taking place in living cells that's why it is called bio bio obviously has to deal with living things and chemical reactions chemical processes that's taking place within living organisms are called biochemical processes so the process of photosynthesis takes place during the day and during photosynthesis carbon dioxide is taken okay in and oxygen is given out and glucose is formed okay so if you have to go by the formula though it's not given in the book i'm just going to show it to you okay this is in the presence of sunlight I think water O2 sorry okay this is uh, presence of sunlight okay light energy right and chlorophyll is also there because this takes place in the lens okay so carbon dioxide combines with water in the presence of sunlight with the help of chlorophyll you get glucose 
C6H12O6. It's the chemical formula for glucose plus oxygen, the byproduct of oxygen, right? Now, what happens in transpiration? This oxygen is used because transpiration takes place during the day and it takes place during the, mostly during the night only. It's much more thick. And they use up oxygen to uh, burn the food that is there. Okay, whatever energy that they have accumulated, they burn it and with the help of which they release energy for the cells. Okay. So it says here, during photosynthesis, carbon dioxide is taken in and oxygen is given out and glucose is formed. A part of this oxygen given out as a result of photosynthesis is used by plants for respiration as I have already told you. Oxygen burns, oxygen oxidizes, it releases the energy that has been formed. Okay. Uh, used for respiration in photosynthesis, no energy in the form of ATP is produced. As you can see, there is no mention of energy anywhere. Okay. On the other hand, respiration takes place both during the day and night. As I've told you, during respiration, oxygen is used by the cells and carbon dioxide is given out. Energy is released in the form of ATP. That's why they say it's not safe to sleep under the trees in the night. During the daytime, the trees will give a lot of oxygen, but in the night when no photo, see transpiration and photosynthesis, they are always taking place together, right? So in the, during the daytime also transpiration taking place, carbon dioxide is being given out, but most of it is getting absorbed by the plant itself for the process of photosynthesis, right? But during the night when photosynthesis stops, carbon dioxide keeps coming out, so there's a lot of carbon dioxide being released inside, into the atmosphere. So if you happen to sleep under the tree, you'll be breathing more of carbon dioxide rather than oxygen. So it becomes dangerous for you, you know, clumping up blood and all these things, carbon monoxide poisoning, all these things are there, right? So it becomes harmful for you, okay? So respiration takes place both during the day and the night. During respiration, oxygen is used by the cells and carbon dioxide is given out. Energy is released in the form of ATP, okay? Uh, if you go to figure 6.6 .6 on page number 73, you can see how energy of the sunlight is uh, incident on chloroplast and the chlorophyll that is there, okay, it goes about manufacturing, uh, goes through the process of photosynthesis, manufacturing glucose and oxygen, okay, so all those things are there, the whole, you can just go to the diagram, okay. Now, uh, the carbon dioxide given out as a result of respiration is used up by the plant for photosynthesis during the day, but at night, as I told you, since no photosynthesis takes place, the carbon dioxide released as a result of respiration is given out through the stomata into the air. Now, photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast in green leaves and green stems. Okay, stem, anything green in a plant, photosynthesis takes place because green means chlorophyll. Okay, there are three types of chlorophyll is also plastic, there are three types of plastic, right? Chlorophyll is one of them, right? It's found in chloroplast, chloroplast, chromoplast, right? We have already covered this in the earlier chapters, I think the earlier classes, right? So, <clears throat> photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast in green leaves and green stems. Respiration, on the other hand, takes place in the mitochondria. It does take place in the cytoplasm also, but mostly in the mitochondria. Uh, mitochondria. Why mitochondria? Because as you have already studied and I am sure that you know that mitochondria is the power of the cell. It basically is the battery of the cell. So it needs energy. Battery also gives us energy, right? The battery in your mobile phones, they gives us, it gives energy to, for the phone to move around. It gives the electrical energy due to which the phone functions for a certain amount of time. Okay. Now, so, uh, the, ex the exchange of gases in plants for respiration takes place through stomata, lenticels, as well as the gen general surface of the roots. And I've already told you this cuticular transpiration also that you'll be studying it in higher classes. Okay. So the differences between photosynthesis and respiration are given in page number 74, table 6.3. The differences are given. Okay. Photosynthesis. Food is synthesized by plants using carbon dioxide and water. True. Carbon dioxide and water. Respiration food is oxidized using oxygen to release energy. I've already, I think previously I've already done the formula for uh, the how it goes about, okay, the steps for respiration. 
In photosynthesis, it takes place only in autotrophs. What are autotrophs? What are we? We are heterotrophs. Autotrophs are plants, green plants that manufacture their own food. That's why they are called autotrophs. We are heterotrophs. Though we also make food, but that's not the kind of food, making food that we're talking. We have to cook food and eat. But we need something to cook food with. We cannot cook food with the help of carbon dioxide, oxygen. We cannot say, I'll take carbon dioxide from the water, uh, air, I'll combine it with water. No, so it doesn't happen that way now. We have to use plants or you have to use animal products like meat and all to make our food. So we are dependent. Okay. So in fact, all animals are dependent on plants. That's why animals are called heterotrophs and plants are called autotrophs because automatic, they make their own food. Okay. <clears throat> Respiration, it takes both in autotrophs and heterotrophs. I told you last time in this chapter, the respiration is a process which takes place in both plants and animals. Photosynthesis takes place only in the cells of green plants that have chloroplasts. That's very important, chlorophyll. It's only found in chloroplasts. So if photosynthesis has to take place, it has to be green. Okay. Uh, respiration takes place in mitochondria of the cells of a plant as I told you a little bit of it takes place in the cytoplasm also but for you right now more important to remember is it takes place in mitochondria photosynthesis takes place during the daytime <coughs> respiration takes place during day and night okay much more pronounced in the night uh, photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide and water respiration requires glucose and oxygen this by see this byproduct this is used in fact, this whole thing is used to produce energy, right? Oxygen is in photosynthesis, oxygen is a byproduct. In respiration, carbon dioxide is a byproduct. That means um, waste product, byproduct, or whatever that comes out, okay? Photosynthesis captures energy and stores it in sugars, energy from the sun, okay? Stores it in sugars. Respiration it releases the energy stored in sugars, okay? So this. In photosynthesis, it captures energy, light from the sun, then it stores it in a sugar, say 6H12O6. This is used by during transpiration to release energy. Okay, so this is the basic difference in respiration and photosynthesis. There is another difference in respiration in plants. Okay, respiration in plants, respiration in animals. I think it's important we need to do this also. Animals take in oxygen through lungs, plants take in oxygen through stomata and leaves and green stems. Lenticels in woody stems and general surface of the roots, pneumatophores, as I told you. Okay. Uh, and respiration in plants, carbon dioxide release as a byproduct in the process and it's not taken back. We do not take back. See, when we breathe, as I speak, I'm doing this. As you watch the video, so you'll be doing that. You'll be taking in oxygen, right? It goes to your lungs. And through your lungs, through the fine veins, it gets diffused out and it's carried by your red blood cells. Your red blood cells are basically disc shaped structures. Okay. From the side view, from the top, it looks like a disc shape. So it's, there's a depression in the middle. Out here, your oxygen molecule gets attached and from your lungs, it goes to the different parts of the body, right? Through your veins and uh, uh, to the different parts of the body, it gets delivered to the cells. Oxygen is given to the cells. Okay. And once the cells, and from the cells, when the cells take in oxygen, they give back CO2, the byproduct, okay? And this, again, the same red blood cell carries the CO2 back to the lungs, through the body, from the body back to the lungs, and we breathe out carbon dioxide. That's what happens, understood? But the carbon dioxide that we give out, we do not use. We have no use for living, uh, like animals, basically, humans, animals, we don't have any use for carbon dioxide as such. But plants, they use both, right? Uh, in respiration, carbon dioxide release as a byproduct in the process and it's reabsorbed for photosynthesis already here. Respiration plants, the food, glucose and oxygen used for respiration are taken from outside. As I told you, we have to take it from outside. We do not have glucose. How do we take glucose in our diet? If you have noticed, mostly like we Indians, even in many cultures, carbohydrates provides you a lot of energy. Understood? Carbohydrates is energy given. So, carbohydrates... Glucose, they are all related, sugar related things, okay? Like uh, people who are diabetes patients, they cannot have potatoes, they cannot have uh, sweet things, they cannot have too much of rice because carbohydrates, glucose, sugar, diabetes is what? When your body, you see, your body produces insulin, 
right the body produces insulin it breaks down the sugar in the body so sometimes this insulin production is um, you know it doesn't produce properly there is an imbalance there is a malfunction in the production of insulin in the body due to which your sugar doesn't get broken down properly there's an accumulation of sugar in the body that's when you start getting diabetes right so it's very important so the bulk of your diet is actually sugars and carbohydrates like we take a lot of rice or uh, sabji or vegetables or whatever curries is less or if you don't take rice you take chapati in other countries they take potatoes mashed potatoes bread all these things okay so so the food glucose and oxygen used for respiration are taken from outside in plants uh, in animals but in plants the glucose and oxygen used for respiration are produced by the plant themselves they might take a little bit from outside but mostly it's within the plant itself and respiration in plants the rate of respiration is very fast in plants is, uh, in animals is very fast but in plants the respiration is slow in fact animals it will be faster because we are moving around we are uh, creatures we are organisms we are mobile organism organisms your mobile phone also why is it called a mobile phone because it can move around with you it can move from one place to another that's what the word mobile mobile comes from the word mobility which means moving around right so we move around so naturally speaking when you move around you need more energy so that's why respiration is very fast in animals plants they don't move they move only from side to side or whenever it's windy or if somebody is shaking the plant that's it otherwise they don't move so the respiration rate the rate of respiration is slow it's common sense <coughs> there's not much of rocket science out here okay so that's the basic difference between the respiration in animals and plants and that's the basic i told you about four senses respiration okay i've already given you the notes go through this video we have come to the end of the chapter i've covered everything and from next week onwards we're going to start uh, another chapter it's called photosynthesis because i think you have already covered the later chapters in last time before when the lockdown started okay now the next class we'll be doing is photosynthesis on page number 60 thank you children